Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I am joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed. Just want to say the Burgundy Zone is part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more at www.listoffrederick.com. And we are joined for the first time ever by big name, Mr. Aaron Schatz, NFL analyst. How are you doing for ESPN Plus? How are you doing on this beautiful Friday evening? I'm good. I'm good. i am uh, been uh, deep this week in Super Bowl prediction writing and um, Tom Brady remembrances, and I'm ready to do more of the first and less of the second. Okay, well then let me, let me ask you, what have you uh, found with the Tom Brady remembrance before we get into the Washington Commanders? I did a um, an article that'll be on ESPN Plus next week of his 50 best games. So that Ooh. meant going back into a lot of uh, a lot of games, remembering a lot of receivers no one remembers anymore, like Brian Timms and Keyshawn Martin, and writing all about them. Yeah, and I'm sure that 2007 matchup versus Washington will be on there. I'm sure. I believe that it is. I believe <laughs> that one was special because Brady had a bunch of rushing value in that game. Really? That's, that's like very four surprising. carries for 26 yards in that game. In the longest of his career. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The one I always remember is the one where he juked out Brian Urlacher, but I don't remember. Uh, what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But uh, the first thing I got to get with to you, Aaron, is big news this week was the Washington football team coming out with their rebrand new team name, the Washington Commanders. So as an NFL analyst, how, how do you view this new team name? Um, it's a name. I'm not too excited about it, but I don't think it's terrible either. Um, I like the idea of calling them the pigskins because then you could, you could, you could connect it to the hogs from the eighties and you could keep all the skins uh, marks and uh, just change it to refer to the football. But you know, they probably went with whatever they thought was best that they could actually get the rights to the URLs, right, and, mm-hmm. and, and the trademarks. And so this is what they're going with. And, you know, the fact is within two or three years, we will all just be used to it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And um, just speaking as an NFL analyst, a lot, of, um, a lot of people in the fan base think that if they get a quarterback, then they can be one of these teams that could possibly – you know, make the playoffs and, you know, once you get in the playoffs, anything could happen. Um, how do you kind of see this team as a whole if they can maybe possibly land a quarterback this offseason? Well, every team feels that way, right? I mean, mm. quarterback is the most important position. So every team feels like if they can just get that quarterback, they've got all the other pieces. I mean, I think there's a lot of good pieces on Washington. They need to figure out what happened to the defense at Salt. Yeah. I mean, the fact yeah. is the secondary was completely discombobulated and they cannot go out another year like that. Uh, the fact it neutralized the pass rush, right? The pass rush is still great, but the secondary was so bad that their defense was in the football outsiders numbers, like 27th or something. I mean, it was just a complete collapse from the year before. So it's not just a quarterback. They need to solve the defensive problems as well. Right. Right. And of course the other big news this weekend is the Brian Flores situation. Do you see Brian Flores coaching in the NFL again, or do you think that he's basically going to be blackballed out? Oh, man, I hope that he gets to coach in the NFL. He's such a good coach. I think he did a good job with Miami, and I would hate to see him blacklisted from this. Um, Clearly, he thought that taking that risk was important enough to do this. My fear with the lawsuit is that it's very difficult to prove these things, that we can he can allege these things. He can show evidence that seems to point to these things, but to actually prove that the Broncos interview of him was a complete sham. Yeah. I think is going to be really difficult. Yeah. I mean, that's a hundred percent it. Cause it turns into the, he said, she said, they're going to show their evidence, right? They're, they're little PowerPoints and a lot to your credit, Reed. I think you're right about that. He, Ryan Flores, what he did down in Miami, it was just absolutely masterful. Um, but let's just speak on the NFL in general, because other big news that happened this week was Aaron Rodgers. Get, saying he bought a, some land or not land, but he bought a house, a property down in Tennessee. And so now that's the hot ticket item. So do you think that Aaron Rodgers could really wind up in Tennessee? And what would that mean for Ryan Tannehill? 
I don't think it's likely because I don't think that the Titans can dump Tannehill's contract to bring Rodgers in. And I don't think that they can make a trade offer that's good enough for what Green Bay would want for Rodgers. I think this is about where Rodgers wants to live after he retires, not where he wants to play next year. Do you think that Green Bay would be willing to rescind or take Ryan Tannehill in that trade? Yeah, but I'm not sure how the, what the salary cap ramifications of that are. And, and, oh, okay. and that would seem to be, it would actually seem to be pointless because if the whole point of them moving on from Rodgers is that they spent this draft pick on Jordan Love, getting another quarterback back in a trade doesn't do anything for them. If they're going to trade Rodgers, what they want to do is build a team around Jordan Love. So um, that's fair. I, it just doesn't make logical sense, I don't think. Okay. Yeah, those are some pretty good points. And before we, uh, as we started, you mentioned the Super Bowl, and that's what are we uh, nine days away right now? What's your early predictions on the upcoming Super Bowl next Sunday? I mean, I like the Rams. It's been a fun little run for the Bengals. Uh, there's no question about it. But the fact is that they got here by winning three close games. Obviously, look, beating Kansas City is impressive, no matter how you do it. But Cincinnati was not a great team in the regular season. By the numbers at Football Outsiders, they were only the 17th best team during the regular season. They would be, if they win the Super Bowl, they would be the lowest rated Super Bowl champion in the numbers that go back to 1983. Wow. Um, and they're one of the lowest teams to ever make the Super Bowl. The Rams are much more like what you expect from a team that makes the Super Bowl. They were fifth in the numbers this year. They were, you know, basically strong all year. Their defense got stronger as the year went on. Special teams got better at the end of the year. Uh, I, I think that the Cincinnati defense is a little overrated because they had the one good game against Mahomes. I think uh, the Rams defense has a much better track record. The stars, guys like Aaron Donald is just going to rip up the interior of that Cincinnati offensive line. So I'm really heavy on the Rams, I think, for the Super Bowl. Right. And the good thing about the Super Bowl for me is you, I want to see either Matt Stafford get his first or Joe Burrow win because Joe Burrow is just so cool. So it's a it's a win win in my in my situation. But I like to see fan bases that haven't won in a long yeah. time get one. And while right. L.A. L.A. has certainly won championships in other sports recently, they haven't won a football title since the Raiders in 83. And Cincinnati has never won the Super Bowl. So in right. that way, it's really nice to see which one wins. Yeah, there's Cincinnati exactly. Bengals uh, reaction videos from after that uh, field goal that uh, McPherson oh, yeah. kicked. Right. That was really cool to watch. Right, right. And speaking of the quarterback position, I know Hall kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but are there any quarterbacks that you think could become available either in free agency or via trade? I know a lot of people are talking about Russell Wilson. Highly unlikely, but it would be awesome. Or in the draft that you could possibly see coming to Washington and kind of changing the culture here? I mean, it's. I don't think the issue is changing the culture. I think the issue is getting better at the position. Well, the culture in terms of winning. Right? I was going to say Rivera has done a good job of changing the culture. I think, you know, you look to your coach for that, and he's, you know, he's strong in that way. Um, I suppose, theoretically, that they could – try to make a play for Rodgers or try to make a play for Wilson. Um, this year's draft class is not considered to be very good. So, you know, it's, there's, you know, you, you never quite know how good a guy is going to be till he shows up in the NFL, but it seems unlikely that any of the rookie quarterbacks for next year are going to show up and suddenly be leading teams to the playoffs. Um, but I think most of the quarterbacks that are going to be on the market are, they all fall into this category of quarterbacks who are more impressive statistically than they are to scouts, okay. whether that's Kirk cousins, Derek Carr, um, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Jameis, uh, sorry, Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston. Well, Jameis Winston scouts like, cause his arm is strong, but I don't see any of these guys coming in and revolutionizing Washington. I mean, listen, it's, it's a year-to-year -year league, and if they solve the problems on defense and get a small upgraded quarterback, you know, they could be right back in the thick of things. But I don't see anybody who takes them and puts them on, like, major Super Bowl contender level. I see, like, the possibility of them getting to, you know, playoff contender level. Right. Okay. And we kind of br briefly touched on Russell Wilson po being a possibility for the Washington football team. He just did the skills challenge the other day in the Pro Bowl, and everyone was just – 
awing over it and saying, we need this guy here in Washington. So what would it take, do you think, for Washington to be able to acquire Russell Wilson? Would it be two to three first rounders and then maybe a player or two? What do you think? Yeah, I think I think the, the, the picks are what's most important in trades like for quarterbacks. So you're talking about two or three first rounders and Seattle would essentially be starting over. So they'd want a lot of draft capital to be working on their team for the future. Um, you know, I don't know which team is willing to make that trade, which team is willing to give up the amount of draft capital that it would take to get Russell Wilson in town. But, um, you know, despite the fact that he had his struggles over the last couple of years, I think he's still someone you want to go after because he can really be a transcendent quarterback when he's at his best. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Um, <clears throat> There's been six of the nine coaching hire coaching hiring so far in the NFL. Which one of those has been the most surprising to you so far? Um, I think the most surprising may be the one that didn't happen yet, <laughs> which is <laughs> Kevin O'Connell from the Rams going to go to the Vikings. Um, I guess they wanted one of those young, hot offensive minds for Minnesota. Um it's good to see Doug Peterson uh, back in the league. I think he got a little bit of the shaft in Philadelphia. I mean, the guy's got a Super Bowl championship. He's a very smart, good offensive coach. Um, nothing. There's n none of them are like, oh, that guy didn't deserve a job. I mean, I guess I'm surprised that any team wanted Josh McDaniels after what happened with Indianapolis a couple of years ago. Yeah. But um, you know, certainly he's got the the history as a coordinator to be somebody who you would look at for a head coaching job. And I'm also surprised that McDaniels would want to go to the Raiders because that is a team you're, you're asking to be competing with Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes right. every year. That's right. tough. Yeah. And you yeah. briefly <laughs> touched on the Vikings job, this whole Harbaugh situation where he was interviewing for that head coaching job during si signing day for Michigan. Have you ever seen that before? I mean, no, uh, the word is that he sort of, thought that he was like a shoe in and when it turned mm. out they were just interviewing him and considering him like all the other candidates he was like well never mind then right yeah so of the open coaching positions or that what is it? it's the dolphins saints and texans that are still left out there which one do you think is the most attractive um i probably would say the dolphins yeah, that's probably what I would say too. The Saints have a defense, but it's getting older, and the Texans the salary are, cap hell. God, you do not want to. Um, you don't want to be involved with the Texans front office right now. Honestly, yeah. the, the weirdness with Jack Easterby, and I just would stay so far away from that. Uh, the problem is the Flores, uh, the Flores tr uh, lawsuit really complicates the issue of going to the Dolphins because you know. What if Stephen Ross really did ask his coach to lose games? You don't want to be coaching in that situation, even though that's not the situation you would be in right now. Right now, they would, they're hiring somebody to go try to win. But um, I think of the three jobs, that's the one that I would want. And with the whole Stephen, with the Ross situation, with uh, telling Flores, now there's a witness saying that they heard him say this to Flores, they will give you 100 k every time that you lose. Wouldn't that be an issue with the NFL's competition committee? Oh, and it will be. Right, oh, and, yeah. What do you oh, think? This is going to be a thing. This is going to be a thing. There's no question about it. Well, what do you think can come of this, the ramifications? I mean, anything from draft pick uh, – defaults to uh, have making him sell the team could i have no wow. idea but there's a there's a wide variety of possibilities here who do you think is more likely to sell the team first dan snyder or uh stephen ross well after this <laughs> stephen ross yeah yeah i guess that's in the integrity of the game at, right. up at stake there you, don't, you do not want especially now that the leagues are all mixed up with gambling mm -hmm. uh, you do not want anybody suggesting that any team at any time is doing anything other than trying to win right my man, I love to hear that. Now, Jason Wright, the team president for the Washington Commanders, made a comment yesterday saying that the NFL, it's simple in order to kind of fix this issue, elaborating on the Brian Flores kind of situation, saying they need to commit to diversity. What do you think Jason Wright means by that? And do you think the NFL is capable of doing so? I don't know. Look, it's so hard because every individual coaching job there's a reasonable explanation for why this white coach was hired over black candidates. I mean, the Minnesota job is a good example. 
because they have a promising young black general manager, uh, Awusu Mensa, I believe is his name. So it's hard to accuse them of any racism. And you, certainly you understand why, given the way the league is gone and, you know, Zach Taylor and Sean McVay in the Super Bowl, why they would want to go with the young offensive mind rather right. than the two black candidates that they interviewed were both defensive coordinators. So, you know, on its own, the idea of going with O'Connell is doesn't seem racist at all. The problem is that once you look at the whole aggregate of what's going on in the league, it's clearly a problem. But which team do you sort of poke and go, okay, well, you have to be the team, even though we know there's good candidates out there. Like, for example, like I think Doug Peterson getting another job is great. But the word is the reason they didn't hire Byron Leftwich was because Leftwich did not want to work with Trent Balke, a general, general manager. And it's like, in order to create diversity, do you say to the Jaguars, you know, if this is the guy you want for your coach, maybe get rid of your general manager, like try a different general manager. I, I, I don't know how to solve the problem, to be honest, because it's a, it's a sort of tragedy of the commons problem where we're each individual experience is not an issue but the whole collective is well, that's a great way to put it yeah yeah that's true and to your point about the left which thing um and the whole gm thing i think i was reading that even with them bringing in a new uh, doug peterson i think he wants to bring in the former vikings gm uh, rich rick spielman i think yeah to so, work with balky but i think balky would still be in charge oh uh, okay, 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 okay. You know. okay okay cool cool um jumping back to the quarterbacks obviously jimmy g's been a hot topic throughout the whole season obviously with 49ers giving up a whole bunch of stuff to um, move up to get Trey Lance. But then obviously Jimmy G leads him into the playoffs, has a pretty nice run. Um, I would say stays healthy for the most part throughout the season. Do well, he was any... hurt in the playoffs. He had his, his yeah, thumb in his yeah, shoulder. Yeah, 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 that's true. He played through it. But, yeah, he was definitely hurt. Um, do you think that there's any way they bring him back, or do you think that we're going to see the Trey uh, Lance era? And if so, what would be a landing spot for Jimmy G? No, I think Washington is a possible landing spot for Jimmy G. Don't honestly. tell me that, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you need a quarterback, that's a quarterback who's going to be on the market. I mean, you know, look, there's another one who fits in with Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr, yep. both guys who the stats like more than the scouts do. Um, there's there's no way Garoppolo's coming back. You you don't spend the draft capital that San Francisco spent to trade up for Trey Lance and then not give him the job in the second year. Right. Yeah, that's the hundred uh, percent. They're moving on. Uh, so obviously, we touched on Washington's new name a little bit. The Commanders. How did you feel about the jerseys? I know there's some. The fan base is kind of divided. It seemed like some people loved them, some people despised yeah. them. Some people say that they're leaving the fan base because of the uniforms. What What was an outside? What did, What? How did you feel about these? I mean, the historic Washington jerseys are classic. I don't see there was right. any reason to change them. The only thing they needed to change was the helmet. And honestly, I like the helmets with the numbers on them. They could have kept that. Right. Wow. I mean, what that was that's very surprising to hear from you, Aaron. Now to wrap this up, I only have a couple more questions for you. But earlier you elaborated on the defense and talking about how the secondary really had fallen off and they have to find out why. What went wrong? So they're with the free agents that are going to be coming about this offseason for the uh Wash for the Washington Commanders. What should what free agents should Washington look at in order to help that defense? Do you think it's more at middle linebacker or secondary? I don't know. I First of all, I can't tell you that I've like watched enough of the Washington defense to say gotcha. this is the issue. But the other thing is, this was they were supposed to have solved this in free agency last year. Like We were like, okay, they're coming off this great year on defense, and they added William Jackson. And William Jackson is going to be this big step forward at cornerback, and that's going to keep their defense from regressing, and the defense is going to be really good. And instead... The defense was terrible. So, like, what do they do? Go out another free agent cornerback? Like, they already tried that. Yeah. I yeah. think they definitely need some depth. They need depth at the defensive back position. But I don't know if, like, a really big spend is the answer or maybe a couple of more depth free agents to improve the, the depth in the secondary would be a help. I can't tell you that I've watched enough of like Jamin Davis to know like how good his rookie year was or anything like that. It, it was not not stellar, very good to, stay, oh, to say that. to say the least. Um, <laughs> now, my next question for you: that I'm, I, I, How do how do I put this? Basically, what is more likely for Washington, in your opinion, around the NFL? Because the Senior Bowl is huge. I think. What are you? What's the latest that you've heard from the Senior Bowl? I think Malik Willis. 
everyone is Malik been talking. Willis is sort of quarterback one at this point. I think because everybody wants the l- low floor, high ceiling Josh Allen prospect type rather than the sort of safe Kenny Pickett prospect type. Right. And do you th- do you think that Malik Willis will be the number one quarterback off the board? Because one thing I'm waiting until tomorrow, until Saturday's actual game, before I make any assumptions just based off what people are saying. I don't know. I think it was Daniel Jeremiah who said that everybody's draft board is going to look different this year, that yeah. there's so many players who are so tight together and how good they are that like teams will have probably dramatic differences in how they rank players and – Uh, That would go for quarterback as well. So I don't know whether Malik Willis really will be the top quarterback off the board, but it seems like he's the guy that if you want it, you want to roll the dice and hope that you get a superstar, even though you may have to roll snake eyes to actually get the superstar. At least there's the chance that Malik Willis becomes that guy. I got you. And last one, I promise, but free agents all together, which do you think should be? let's say wide receiver pause because they need a number two a free agent you think that would be good for Washington because they do have a lot of cap space. Um, I don't know who the free agent wide receivers are, but you're right. They could use a number two wide receiver. Definitely. Um, they need to resign Scherf. You think so? Right. The first guy, the first thing they need to do is keep their own guy, right? Either. Mm. I mean, there aren't a lot of great interior linemen in the free agency. So you might as well bring back the really good one you already have. And they paying them an eighteen million dollar price tag for the. Um, they can't franchise him again. Yeah. That ain't happening. So, no, but you think no, that that, be a long that contract would have to be much lower in order to, for him to come back? But Aaron, I can't thank you enough for coming on here and joining us and being able to kind of educate us on what's happening around the league and your view on things. That was that was absolutely great to hear what you said about Brian Flores. I absolutely agree with you in that aspect, sir. Um, before we get out of here though, if you want to plug your social media handles, um, and everything, so fans are watching this want to come follow your work. Sure. The site is called footballoutsiders.com. You'll find me there as well as on ESPN plus Twitter at FB outsiders or me personally at F O underscore a shots. That's S C H A T Z. I butchered your last name in the intro. I, I know it so happens. Sorry, I'm Aaron. used to it. It's all good. <laughs> so sorry. Aaron. You have a, you have a good night, sir. I hope you enjoy your weekend and enjoy the senior bowl and the pro bowl this weekend. Thank, thanks a lot guys. All right, Thank Aaron. You. All right, everybody, we just talked to Mr. Aaron Schatz that time. I got it right this time, I promise. Uh, But there is so much to go over. Um, And the first thing I want to kind of talk about is that committee hearing, uh, because the Twitter sphere is going up and up in flames right now, dude. Everyone's wanting Snyder to get out of here. Hall, what was your reaction to it? Um, I mean, I didn't really have a reaction because this is basically all stuff that we already knew and already heard that the Washington Post had um already been reported and, and this is like some of the stuff that kind of came out after the the wilkinson report so i mean i guess it was a little bit more cringy to actually like hear it in person i didn't even watch it but it's just like from all the clips i saw on twitter from people posting so but at the end of the day like i said it's i wasn't really moved or shifted either way because this is like a lot of stuff and a lot of information that majority of the fan base and had to actually like follow the team in depth uh kind of already knew yeah, dude, it was really weird because I saw that the uh, NFL lawyer and Dan Snyder's personal lawyer kind of had a statement uh, regarding the uh, the new allegations from one of the – I think she was a former cheerleader, if I'm not mistaken, or she used to work for the Washington football team, I think like 13 years ago. But he, they basically said she refused to be interviewed um, regarding the investigation by Beth Wilkinson, but then comes out to this hearing that was not under oath, just for clarification – and so that does bring doubt into the equation. So I do think that was a great point by them in order to stick that in there because I think there should be another side of some sort of defense here. What did you think, Reed? Um, I'm kind of like Hall where, where I didn't really watch much of it, but I've mainly been reading tweets. Uh, it's one of those things where it just kind of gets under your skin and I'm just going to wait a little bit for everything to start coming out more before I really indulge in it. But yeah, it's, it's disappointing, obviously, but at the same time, a lot of it we knew and uh, I'm just kind of waiting to see where it goes from here. Yeah, dude, and then the other news that came out that I just saw on Twitter, I want somebody to please make sense of this. What NAGA, the uh, Native American uh, Guardian Association, I think is what their or guard association, they came out and said that they they want NFL fans to use the Redskins name still um, to 
basically around the NFL. They want you to be able to say Redskins to be able to talk about the Washington, the Washington Commanders. My whole question is, what, what the hell happened? That's that's one of those things where it was. Remember when when the whole name changing was going on? It was uh, some some natives said that yes, this is a thing of honor. This is what we want. And then other ones said no, you got to get rid of it. There's both. Now we're starting to see both sides. Now it's no, no, no. This is a good thing. We want you to still use it. And it, it's tough because you got to kind of appease the people that are offended by it. But I don't know. It, it's hard. But we. I kind of figured this would happen. Yeah, and they said like no Native American imagery, but you can use the name. So I am so confused. As to why all of this happened. That doesn't make any sense, right? No, it doesn't. What do you think, all? Yeah, I'm confused. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm just trying to wonder, like, where was this statement at, like, the past? I mean, I, obviously, there was other statements that came out, but where was this this huge, like, statement that you just, like, posted and, and stuff like that during the whole 18-month period? Because I feel like that maybe could have swayed them as far as rebranding-wise. Right. A whole different type of way. But and- – I mean, wasn't at this the point, it is what it is. We're not going back. Now, right. so. Remember, for 20 years, the petition was changed the name. It wasn't changed the logo. It was changed the name. Yeah. So now you're saying use the name. It, exactly. But like, don't use the logo. It, it comes up with like Matt Miller and uh, Mike, Gar- not Garofalo, uh, the other one, the, uh, uh, Pro Football Talk, Mike, uh, saying like they wouldn't uh, even Mike, say, uh... they wouldn't even say the name. They would say Washington. That's all they would do. Yeah. Like they refuse to say it. Which is I just can't even ins- remember his name because I hate him. It, it's it, it's insane to me you know, where we're at at this point. But let's move on to our fan questions. And the first one's going to be from the Colonel. And his question is: How have do you guys have any of the latest developments regarding the quarterbacks? I.e., the Senior Bowl, different coaching hirings, refocused our quarterback search. Hall. Uh no, just all the buzz is about Malik Willis right now. Um, I'm hearing that Mike Tomlin and the Steelers really have their eyes set. I said on Malik Willis right now, obviously this could all just be like a misplay or, and something like that. And, and I pretty much every prospect talks to every team down at the Super Bowl. So it's not even really like, Oh, the Steelers met with Malik Willis in secret. But <laughs> um, I will say this though, if someone like Mike Tomlin in the Steelers front office, who has a high pedigree of quarterback play throughout the years and one of those great, just cornerstone organizations that do everything pretty much the right way for the most part. If they like a guy like Malik Willis, that's kind of saying something. So Washington should uh, definitely get some more eyes on my man Malik Willis. Yeah, I did hear rumblings that uh, Rivera absolutely loves Malik Willis, which would make a lot of sense in my opinion. I, I don't think there's been much developments, Coach. Um, I did think the Doug Peterson down to Jacksonville, obviously that's big. But Kevin O'Connell getting the job, most likely getting the job because they can't they can't hire him until Another after the Washington Super Bowl. coach. Oh my god! Him going to the wait, Vikings. he coached for Washington. <laughs> uh, him going to the Vikings, which is, I think is a really good fit. I think that would take Kirk Cousins out of the race, right? Because you would imagine that Kevin O'Connell would be in the year of the Vikings saying, "No, no, no! I have worked with him in the past. I want to bring Kirk back, and I, we can make it work, and we can make this whole thing look really, really good." That that's how I view it. What about you, Reed? Yeah, so the the Mike Tomlin thing is interesting with Malik Willis because, remember, after the season, he had talked about how mobile quarterbacks really change the game and you can do so much with them. Like he noted Lamar Jackson over in Baltimore, and Malik Willis is very similar to Lamar Jackson in terms of his athletic ability. And then also uh, Carson Strong. Carson Strong said that Washington – he thinks that Washington is one of the teams where he interviewed with that he felt really comfortable, has strong interest in him. So that's interesting, and we know Carson Strong has the best arm probably in this draft class. Um, I'd, obviously, I don't think he's a first-round pick, but uh, that's something to maybe keep an eye on if they, if they go after a veteran or something. Of course, the Russell Wilson news is always big where uh, – I forget who, who was it who said that, um, that we were going after – he heard rumblings. And he doesn't know how true it is, it but that we're going like to be going Garofolo, after Russell Wilson. It, it was uh, – Mike I, for, I forget. No, it was, there was somebody – that I'll have to pull him up. But, um, yeah, so that's always something to keep an eye on. Like we said, I don't think Russell Wilson's going anywhere. He said he isn't, but – who knows? The other one is Josh McDaniels in uh, Las Vegas. W- would you think that Josh McDaniels would be willing to move on from Derek Carr? Do you think he wants to start from scratch with Marcus Mariota? W- like, I think that has big in- implications. But if, if I was going to sit here and make a guess, I don't think Derek Carr is going to be available now because of the Josh McDaniels hired. If it was a defensive-minded coach, I would say there's more likelihood that you'd be able to grab Derek Carr away from Vegas. But now that McDaniels is there, I, I don't see a, a way for Derek Carr to leave. What do you think, Carl? Because that's your boy. Yeah, I mean, it definitely uh, makes it a little a little less uh, less likely that they get that they move on from him. But I will say this, that, and maybe he learned from his mistakes from last time, but 
Josh McDaniels is kind of ahead of the curve because he drafted Tim Tebow, who was kind of that mobile guy. He's always said that with working with Tom Brady for all those years. And then obviously you work with a guy like um, Mac Jones, who's not really mobile either. Mac he's Jones. always been fast. He's always been fascinated by and intrigued by working with a mobile quarterback. Um, you see what he did with Cam Newton. Cam Newton had, I want to say, is the most rushing touchdowns he had his whole career under Josh McDaniels. So I definitely think that uh, if he wants to go the the, the new NFL route and get that mo- uh, that mobile quarterback guy, I could definitely see them possibly moving on. So I will say Derek Carr still in play only because of the Josh McDaniel factor. And I got like Marcus Mariota might fit the bill or they might go draft or something like that. Or maybe Russell Wilson. So I know Russell Wilson was on the list of uh, – or Las Vegas was on the list of teams that Russell Wilson was that be attracted to. So, you know, like I said, any type of quarterback movement – to shake Derek Carr loose is good movement for me. <laughs> and of course it is all. Now let's <laughs> let's move on to the next question from the Colonel. And this is regarding the stadium relocation. He asks, is there going to be an open battle between Mario Bowser and Governor Yunkin for the stadium read? Um, I don't know. But it's interesting. I know, I know that Bowser is saying coming out what you did with the letter, I think is huge. Um and then her saying that they would break ground uh, for us to come there. That's amazing. And of course, remember the entire thing was once you can't come here with this name, once you change the name, you can come here. They changed the name. Jason Wright says we'll have a new stadium by 2027. I don't know if there'll be a little tug of war between those two, but I like to think that we will be back in DC. So. Yeah. Cause I know that Virginia has been obviously very adamant in trying to pull them, uh, pull Washington to their facility, their land over by Dulles. And we talked to Michael Phillips a couple weeks ago. We had, perfect breakdown of having the gambling aspect along with it. And that's where DC was kind of not up to par with Virginia at that point. But Jason Wright, uh, team president just came out with a tweet. I think it was either yesterday, uh, thanking Larry Hogan, governor Larry Hogan of Maryland for talking with him and them trying to get into the race as well, Colonel. So yeah, this is a three headed monster at this point. It looks like they are trying to get them back. I just, the only thing that Maryland has is the Ferris wheel is the national Harbor really, but where else would that stadium be able to go? And that would be good for fans that could incorporate DC on the Potomac. That's the only spot. And I really do believe that this is now going to be where Washington commanders are in the driver's seat. They're going to be able to choose where they want to go. It wasn't long ago that all the media locally was talking about how nobody wants this team stadium. Nobody's talking them. Nobody wants it. Well, damn, that changed fast. Didn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that Maryland, I think he was just thinking Larry Hogan, because like you said, there's not really any place other than National Harbor to really put the stadium at, which, again, as someone that lives in Maryland, I would love that. And I know it's definitely like a close pull. Uh-oh, Hall, your, uh, your mic went out. <laughs> what they should do is just cement over downtown Bethesda and, and then just put the stadium over top of everything. <laughs> Why <laughs> why do you hate Bethesda? Hall, are you back I don't know. Yet? It's boring. I, I, I used to love I'm it. I'm not then. into it anymore. All right, what were you saying, Hall? No, I was gonna say I definitely think that uh, I would love it to be in National Harbor because that's still in Maryland. It's a it's a close point for DC and Virginia as well. But I think that's definitely like third on the list. I definitely think it's gonna be like a a tug of war between Virginia and DC. Um, I definitely know that from just hearing 106 and all the beat reporters and seeing on Twitter what everyone posts that if it's the team's choice, they're definitely going to want to go back to DC at the old RFK spot. So for definitely for mayor Bowser, definitely come out and say that, that if they pay for the stadium, they'll break the ground. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it really just comes down to is Dan Snyder going to pay for this or what? Yeah, and um, I, I had asked the colonel if he had a question regarding the rebrand or anything. He was like, no, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I was like, why, man? What's going on? Speak your mind. And uh, I'm not going to read what exactly he said, um, <laughs> but uh, he doesn't like the colors. Uh, he thinks that the red on the white jersey uh, is too red. Uh, and I know that the Washington football team kind of showed close-ups. It looks different in the close-up. It actually looks more like burgundy than it does red at that point. Because uh, I know he made a comment to me the other day that Street Scores Rico on his YouTube channel said that uh, we look like the McDonald's a- emblem. Uh, <laughs> down. I was like, man, that's messed up. Uh, but I it- will tell you, that the so the green jersey mock-ups that people made where they added yellow to the white jerseys, which some I think are awesome, especially like the yellow on the sleeves. But take that stupid yellow out of the middle of the numbers where, where they're fading the numbers from yellow to burgundy yeah, to yellow. It's exactly. like that looks like something a fifth grader did. No offense to the dude who made it. 
I it love looks like your a Maryland design. Terps jersey, honestly. That's yeah, it's good. just like something that you would buy from FUBU at Walmart or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like super cheesy looking. The, the other thing that made me laugh was he said, um, he said, I don't like the W. The criticism about it looking like a taco holder, I will remember for the rest of my life. And <laughs> it does, that, that does made, look like a taco that, holder. That made, that made me laugh. Like a lot. That's kind of but, tight, though. I'm kind. Of, I love tacos. Yeah, me too. I, if I could have any perfect meal, it's a taco. Everyone loves. Yeah, tacos. Let's talk about the W. <laughs> yeah, the W. The W. I don't love uh, because you know I think that they should try to grab and incorporate the W that the Caps and the Nats use the straight one, not the not the curly W, but the one that the Caps use. I think for like their uh, specialty alternate jersey, the blue one. It's more the straight, more the strong one. I like that a lot more. But obviously, there's a, probably a lot more that goes in to it that I'm just overseeing and not talking about because I'm ignorant. Um, but I, I do agree. The W isn't blow, mind-blowing, but I do like the 3D aspect of it. I saw Tay and Todd uh, posted on that earlier. But um, yeah. I, it, I, this is just the start. This is just the rollout, and they're going to be able to critique it. They're going to be able to adapt to what everyone is saying. And this is the point of all of this. This is why we want you to be able to talk so we can actually have good constructive criticism in order to make this the best product possible. We need you guys to speak up about it, but just just don't be, you know, asses. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, now, the next question we have is from the Discord chat server, our guy Sergio Martin out in Spain. There was a mock draft that was on the NFL Network. It had Kenny Pickett going ninth to the Broncos. It had Matt Corral going 11th to the to the Washington Commanders. So he wants to get your opinion on that, Reed. What do you think about that rollout? Would you be okay with Matt Corral? Because he doesn't like him. Um, I, I've, I'm the big fan of Matt Corral, the football player. I'm not necessarily uh, the, the biggest fan of him being a franchise quarterback. Like I, I like the guy. I, I think that he's basically Taylor Heineke 2.0, only with a way stronger arm. Um. I don't think that Matt Corral will end up being the second best quarterback in the, in this class. I don't think he. I think he'll be probably the third highest rated prospect. Obviously, we've seen what Malik Willis has done. He's probably going to be end, end up being number one. Kenny Pickett number two. Um, and then after that, it's probably a pretty big drop. So I don't think that we. I think in order to get a quarterback, those are the two that you want, and you're going to have to trade up to do it because we know quarterbacks all go high nowadays, no matter how deserving they are of it. Yeah, and every time that I uh, like see Matt Corral's name or watch his film, the only thing that comes to mind, I don't want your life. Look like John Moxley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and plus, what race are you, dude? Stop. <laughs> this guy has looked different in every picture. I swear to God, Google it. He's got cornrows in some pictures. He looks super white in some pictures. He looks like a Pacific Islander in some pictures. He looks Latino in some pictures. What are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so messed up um no but, it's true it's not messed up um but i honestly i don't like that that uh that draft pick right there i don't uh, i look matt corral i watched more tape on him after i was very uh, i was very i was criticized him a lot after watching his film just because i think he escapes the pocket way too much he doesn't do things as a pocket passer you would like to see at that level but at 11 i would rather go down if we're going to go quarterback there I would rather go for the boomer bus guy, and that being Malik Willis at that point. Um, and and I think the interview process is probably the most important aspect to you drafting a player. And so that, that's why it's hard for me to be able to watch film and say, yeah, they would love this kid because you don't know what's going to go down in the interview process. Would Ron Rivera have liked Dwayne Haskins in the interview process? Most likely not. Just to be just to be frank. And so I don't think they would have drafted him at that point. So we have to see what's going on with the interview process. But from what I'm hearing, that he likes Malik Willis. So I don't like that mock draft. And Lord knows there's going to be 30 mock drafts, Sergio, by the time that uh, late April comes around. So there's I, I going to be more than 30. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. What about you all? I don't like yo mock. Um, yeah, I'm kind of with like Reed where I like him as a football player. But <laughs> that was a good one, right? I like him as a football player, but he kind of gives me like uh like RG three type of vibes, where not where like the RG three the person, just like can't slide. He's trying to be like show like how tough he is, and he's just gonna get beat up so badly throughout the season that he's just not gonna be able to stay healthy. But as far as like Rita, he's like kind of like Taylor Heineke two point where he has a strong arm. He's mobile. He's what you want in the new age NFL. I just think that he's too slight of frame to withstand the pounding that comes with the NFL week in and week out. Yeah. So also, at the end of the day, Matt Corral was the second best quarterback coming out of like throughout the at the end of the season. But you got to think that without him being at the senior bowl, he's going to drop a little bit. 
they're going to do a new mock draft. It'll probably be Malik Willis at number 11 or something like that. Or Kenny Pickett might drop down to a number 11 since maybe Malik Willis jumps him. So, like you said, there's going to be hundreds of mock drafts between now and April. So, just got to see how it shakes out. Yeah, I, I agree with that aspect. I'm so cringe, dude. Um, I just remembered listening because you talked about how tough RG3 was uh, trying to prove that. Remember every time after he got hit, he would lay there for a second or two. Like, oh, is yeah. he going to get up? Like, yeah, yeah I'm up, you know? it would always <laughs> take our breath away. We'd be like, oh, no, he's hurt. And he'd get up and he'd just be like, God, Robert, stop being so dramatic. It's almost <laughs> as dramatic as his TikToks. Uh, everyone has been talking about that and how cringe were they. Yeah. Talk about cringe. Yeah, that God. Cringe. God, I, I suffer some pretty bad secondhand embarrassment from people, but RG3 is up there amongst the worst. <laughs> That like is, I, I, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, I feel bad for you, man. Like, stop. Like, but, it's not cool. Well, to to add salt into the wound, I mean, he wasn't he the other day talking about wondering where his Letterman jacket was from the Washington Commanders, and was yeah, it, wasn't too long ago that he was at a book surviving Washington. Yeah, yeah, because he thinks <laughs> what? what? Yeah, it, no it, self awareness at all. Where's my Letterman jacket? Um, I don't know. Probably in the dumpster with all those allegations you made on your book, <laughs> hater. In his mind, he's probably just like trolling all of us. Like, ha 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 ha. He is, he's like, oh, everyone I'm so funny. I look like, like a gecko. Oh, I was gonna oh. say, everyone else is looking at you like, but you look yeah. like a troll. So. Everybody else is looking at you like, can your eyes be spaced any further apart? Can you see behind you at this point? <laughs> <laughs> You can't sneak up on him. It's impossible. He catches Please you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move to our Discord chat uh, server. Another question from our guy, Big Tony Shivers. He asks, would you rather drop an in-their-prime Santana Moss or London Fletcher onto this commander's team? Read. We'll see. I feel like a London Fletcher would really put this defense at an elite level. Like, imagine having him behind this D line with the secondary. I'm as much as I love Moss, and we need a number two wide receiver. Yeah, I'm gonna go London Fletcher. I just get excited thinking about somebody like that who's that smart, that intelligent, can get everybody lined up, and then how much that would just improve the entire defense. Oh my, that would be fun. That way, Jamin Davis and Cole Holcomb, whenever they're on the field together, wouldn't have to think about anything. They would just get these athleticism and go around. That would elevate that defense a lot. Yeah, and I agree with you. I love Santana, a former guest of ours that was on here not too long ago. I love him a lot, but London Fletcher was missed sorely on this football team last uh, on the Commanders last season. Uh, that was not no disrespect to Cole Holcomb or Jamin, but it was like that leadership aspect, somebody to take control of those guys and to be able to say, "This is what's happening. This is what's going on," and that's why I think London Fletcher would be an absolute perfect piece to this defense, getting them over the top. Because I would imagine that he, they would not have been last in the league in the past defense like they were for a majority of those weeks if London Fletcher's on this team. He just simply would not allow that. What about you, Hall? I know, I know, you're the wide receiver guy. Uh, you have to go with Tanner, right? No, I mean, Tanner's my guy. I love me some Santana Moss. But, I mean, the obvious answer has to be the Iron Man, London Fletcher. Like, it was so glaringly obvious that our linebacker play was just, like, mediocre at best last year. And you get a guy that should be getting Hall of Fame votes. If you look at the – everyone always likes to post his numbers compared to Ray Lewis. Obviously, Ray Lewis, first ballot Hall of Famer. But I definitely think that uh, you put the Iron Man in on his defense – they instantly shoot back up to like that number two top five defense again. Like Reese said, he'll get everyone lined up. Just like you want to run through a wall to play for play with London Fletcher. Everyone that has always played with him says nothing but great things about him and how he's just like that on the field, just captain, that on the field defensive QB, which is what this defense desperately needs. So it has to be London Fletcher. Yes. Hey, uh, real fast, Daddy's got to start closing up the shop. All right, go close up the shop, bub. All right. Make Daddy hey, proud. Sorry, <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's move on to our next question in the Discord chat server, and that's from our guy, Jeff Miles. Dude, he's been fired up this week, dude. He has been shooting them off, and he's got one, a heater for us. And you're going to like this one, Hall, because it pertains to a show that you watch. Question for the pod. For the past two years, sports talk shows specifically have been coming at us hard for not having a real name. Now that we have one, no one has said a damn thing. Good, bad, any opinion at all. Is this just further proof that the world doesn't care if we do good? They only care about opportunities to make fun of us? Calling out specifically First Take, NFL Live, Undisputed, 
when they talk about the Cowboys every single episode, even when they went five and eleven, I'll, I'll laugh my ass off. And and those that do are now saying we should have just stuck with the Washington football team. His answer is get the f out of here. <laughs> what do you think, Hall? I like that answer. Um, yeah, I mean, I said it the other day that the national media doesn't really have any idea what they're talking about when it comes to Washington, unless they're playing Dallas. And that's when they only get a little bit of shine on national networks or for something negative, some type of negative light is being shined on the team. Then they get talked about nationally. And look, at the end of the day, they've been mostly bad for the past 20, 30 years. So I'm not going to say they deserve the negative light because they do do some great things week in and week out, year in and year out. At, the, at times, it's just everyone loves the negative. Everyone loves clickbait. Everyone loves negative stories. That's what we get the most shine. And that's what we get the most views on TV, internet, stuff like that. So, like you said, at the end of the day, get the F out. But it's time for – it's a new era. It's the commanders now. So, hopefully, they can flip it around, start a new winning tradition, a new winning era, and we'll get that shine on the national media outlets. Like, they, like I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. Beginning of the season, people were talking about us because there was a little bit of hype around the team. They didn't live up to the hype, so they deserve to get talked about negatively by the national media. New year, new team, new era. Hopefully you start winning. They'll be talked about as winners. Yeah, and look, Jeff, yeah, I think that solidifies it, right? To basically tell you that that is the only motivation to be able to spin things the only way that they can to make Washington look as bad as possible. Now, do I think that is some sort of conspiracy puppet wielding kind of thing. No, I don't necessarily believe so, but I do believe that they are smart. They know Cowboys fans flock to anything that comes out and they watch heavily. They comment heavily. And so they suck up to them. And especially with Jerry Jones, um, every NFL network, ESPN, all of them always flood with Jerry talk, always love talking that Jerry talk. And as much as everyone knows, the league does better when the Cowboys are doing well. Obviously, we all know that because it's a bunch of simpletons, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a simpleton too. I I resonate with that 100%. But I'm glad that you see this, Jeff. But the fact is, that's why for me, and a lot like you, that's why here at home, Us as a fan base, we have to start thinking about doing things differently because if we're making fun of our team, if we are piling on our team, talking about how bad it is, everyone else nationally is going to be hopping on, and who's there to defend us? I mean, do we have any loyalty in that aspect, or are we just like, oh, yeah, screw it, yeah, we'll make fun of them, or is there some pride here? Because I do think that there is no, there's not a lot of pride left here in the Washington fan base, and you can point blame at anywhere you want, but the fact is, that fact remains, and it is true. Yeah, and to the whole Dallas point, again, if you look at all those shows, like Undisputed, who's the host of the show, Skip Bayless, huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah. You look at First Take, who do they have on? They have Michael Irving Mondays. Stephen A. Smith has his whole Stephen A. Cowboy, Stephen A. Smith. Like They talk about the Cowboys 24-7. So if you just look around all these shows and different – Marcus Spears, NFL Live, former NFL – or former Cowboy – Marcellus Wiley, speak for yourself, former Cowboy. So it's just when you're a Cowboys player, you get all those opportunities outside of the NFL world. And it just so happens that a lot of former players are on a lot of shows that people talk about. So they just bring up the Cowboys talk all the time. So it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. And before we get to our next question, I wanted to put this in there from Jeff Miles. He said, also, coming from an artist, the colored numbers on the white unis are the same as the burgundy jerseys. It's an optical illusion because of the mixture of white that tells your eyes it's brighter or more vibrant. Personally, I wish both were darker, but they are the same burgundy, in quotes. So thank you for elaborating on that, Jeff. I appreciate that because that that optical illusion does make sense. They should have put out like that meme, like, with the whole like towel thing, like, do you see blue? Do you see yeah, green? The, the dress it should have been like, yeah. Yeah, or the dress. Yeah. The dress should have been like, do you see red or burgundy? And it would have been a whole thing. And people would still be talking about it even more. So, <laughs> yeah. But, and uh, then uh, Sergio Martin actually has another question for us. He wanted to know, Hall, do you like the white uni and which one, which one of the jerseys would you be buying? Oh, uh, you can already stamp that. I'm going to be getting one of those all black jerseys. Like I've been wanting like the a Colonel black doesn't and- like the all black. Dang, you're in the minority. He says he, he says he, minor, we don't need to. Black. He's <laughs> he says we don't need to be the Steelers. But my rebuttal, yeah. to, my rebuttal to him though was it is an alternate jersey, so it's only yeah. going to be used for night games, which comes around maybe once a season, 
or big important games at the end of the season like we saw against Philly uh, last season. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're going to be used like kind of like when they use the white on whites throughout exactly. the years where it's like like a hype up the game. Night games, we're going to have a blackout at the stadium, you know, black uniform. So I definitely get where they went with that. I like the black uniforms myself. Um, the burgundy ones, I'm definitely going to probably cop a burgundy jersey. I do like the white ones. My only gripe would be that it needs like some type of yellow in it. That's my only gripe. Maybe gold. like on the sleeve or gold. Sorry, gold. gold. Yeah, I know, I, gold, yellow, same thing. <laughs> but it needs some type of gold, like maybe like on the sleeves, maybe um, maybe around the numbers to make it look like a little bit more darker burgundy to match the the, <laughs> the traditional burgundy. But all in all, I would go black jerseys, my favorite. The burgundy jerseys are a close second. And I'm kind of, meh, on the white ones, but it'll probably grow on me eventually. Yeah, the black unis are number one for me, Sergio. Um, Everyone knows I've been clamoring them for a while because I felt like for those night games, for those primetime games, there wasn't like an added element of home field advantage or something like something special with it. And I think those black unis could really provide that. Um, and I, I know that you guys don't all agree with it. And I totally understand that, but that's why constructive criticism is good. Right. And the white unis, I do like the white unis. The only issue that I had was that there wasn't a good combination or balance of yellow or I just did it. Gold and bur- <laughs> gold and gold. Bur- gold and burgundy, um, ex- especially on the shoulder pad area right here. That little stripe that went around that was black. I thought that could have been changed to gold. I thought the gold, uh, the black trim around the number that should have been changed to gold. You don't need to completely take the black out, but there needs to be a good balance of burgundy and gold in order to really make the uniform pop. Besides that, I loved it. And then. The actual burgundy jersey, I think, is is really clean. I think that's the best jersey that they have by look-wise because it does link with the past in a way. And so that way, you're moving on to the future, but at the same point, the burgundy is really a hyper point of uh, contention. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, people are complaining because it's not the traditional burgundy that has been with the jersey, like, obviously, the ones hanging up behind you. But, again... I'm not saying they're like moving away from any, all the old stuff and the old history, everything like that. It's just, it's a new era. It's a new, it's a new time. They want to have like a newer, fresher look. And I don't fault them for that because at the end of the day, it's still a burgundy and gold look. And at, like you said, once they come out on the field, everything is going to look like nice when they got like all the sleeves and the wristbands and everything like that to go to match with it. So I think everything will be fine. And again, like everything else that comes with football, Winning cures all. You win more games, people will love the jerseys even more. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That is so true. And I saw Grant Paulson put on Twitter earlier uh, regarding to his show on 106.7 saying, this more time. This is more important than ever for Washington to get off to a fast start in 2022. And look, I, I, I don't – There's no, that doesn't make sense. If the season started tomorrow, I would say, yeah, I think – yeah, I think so. Right now, they would need a fast start to get kind of positive attention on them. But it's not until September. You know, like, nobody's really going to be remembering by then. Do they need a good start? No, they just need to have a good season. Let's get back to the playoffs. Let's win a playoff game. And then things will really, really start turning around. Now, with the last question that we have, it's from our guy Scott Hartley in the U.K. Oh, Before you do that, before you say that question, though, I will say to counter that, I think it is important to get off to a fast start because if the whole thing is they're like trying to have a new brand, new era, usher in new fans, get fans back to the stadium, the only way to get fans back to the stadium is to win some games. If they get off to another slow start, you already know this fan base. Oh, it's the same old team, same thing, new team, new all that bull crap, blah, 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 bull crap. So Damn you and your they logic. Get, they need to get off to a fast start. Only And obviously, you know how it is around here with all the coaches and yeah. the, the slow starts. People are going to be calling for Rivera's head. They start off 2-5, and 2-4 and four again, something like that. So I definitely think they need to come up with a fast start hit the ground running and just usher in this whole new winning era. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're frozen, but I can still hear you. Yeah, yeah, um, and, um, and so then a question from Scott Harley in the UK. Oh, wait, with oh, such yeah. a good showing at the senior bowl, does Willis go off the board as the first quarterback taken? Do you think Washington takes him at 11? And would you entertain on trading up to get him? He says he's been on the train for a while and I'm glad that he's glad that he's getting the hype. Yeah, no, you've definitely been on the train. Um, I've, I was a Malik Willis fan. It's just 
when I actually did watch him on TV, the, the minimal times he was on TV this past college football season, it kind of threw me off. I'm not going to lie. But when everyone factored in the town around him, the town he's going against, whatnot, and then, look, you're going against similar talent to him at the Senior Bowl. Obviously, he's out there putting on a pretty good showing. We'll see how he looks in the actual game come tomorrow. And he still has a long way to go. This is a guy that never took a, really a snap under center. He's been in shotgun pretty much his whole college career. So he's got to get used to that. But it's still a long way to go. But at the end of the day, would I entertain trading up for him? I would say that depends how the rest of this draft process goes. But if you're going to have to jump up multiple, multiple spots to get him, then I would say no. If you got to jump from like 11 to 8 to jump the Broncos, something like that, I can see them doing something like that. But if the, another team takes Mal- Malik Wills in front of you, I'm the type of guy I wouldn't mind Kenny Pickett because I know he's a day one possible day one starter. So it's just all about, depends how the draft board shakes out, how these free agency quarterbacks move, if they ever have any movement, trade, stuff like that. But no, I wouldn't mind trading up a couple spots for Malik Willis, but I do. That is my number one quarterback so far that I want for the. I think that he has a chance to change the trajectory of this franchise if he's there at 11. I don't think you should trade up for Malik Willis. I, I'm sorry. If you're going to be trading any assets away, it should be for a veteran quarterback because it, the only time that you should be mortgaging your future, giving up multiple assets in order to acquire a quarterback, you better make sure that he can play quarterback at a high level in this league with nothing around him because you're not going to have the assets to be able to counteract any injuries that go on. And so you have to make sure that quarterback can do well with nothing going on. That still is a concern for Malik Willis. I know he's doing very, very well at the Senior Bowl. That's why I said tomorrow is going to be very indicative because it's game time, it's game flow. They really, it's going to be the better measuring stick for what's going on. I know a lot of people have been putting out the seven on seven tape, but it's seven on seven. Nobody's rushing at him. He doesn't have to diagnose the rushers, the line, or everything like that. But I do like Malik Willis. I would like him at 11. But my whole thing is. If Malik Willis is there at 11, what does that kind of tell you? Because everyone keeps saying all these teams need a quarterback. Well, who are they going to take? And I know what we're all speculating that Malik Willis is going to go number one, uh, the number one quarterback to be taken. And we just heard Aaron say earlier that this isn't really that great of a a quarterback class. But I resonate with the fact that I will trust whatever the heck they do. If they want that quarterback, go out and get him. If you believe in Malik Willis, go out and get Malik Willis. I'm with you. I just, I'm. I'm worried about trading assets in order to acquire him. I would much rather go for like a Russell Wilson, somebody you know who will be commanding this offense and doing really well. Um, and I, there was a really funny comment today because Rhea, uh, Rhea Robinson, uh, rambling with Rio, put out a tweet, a picture of Malik Willis in the Washington Commanders uniform, the All Blacks. And the number was really small, and this dude wrote on there. He was like, why has he got a baby boy number? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that I thought that was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, but credit to you, Scott. You have been on the Malik Willis train. You, Michael Haas, you guys have really uh, been on that guy. And we've been going back and forth, and I agree. The dude is absolutely electric. You have to dedicate one defender to him at all times on every single play, and that is such a positive for an offensive coordinator. It really does make everything easier for the offense. But my whole thing is, can Scott Turner be able to orchestrate and morph this offense to Malik Willis and then counteract that? Can he be able to switch the offense back in case Taylor Heineke needs to come in in case of injury? And that's where I'm kind of like, all right, does it work? And that's what right. I, all I'm worried about. But I, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to be pissed. I'm going to love it if they take Malik Willis at 11. I don't care what happens at that point. We just need to make some solid picks here. And we need to hit high in order to get ourselves projected to next year to where we really need to be. That's just my opinion. Yeah, 100%. I mean, look, you look at outside of the Rams, a lot of the teams that are, are where they are. I mean, look at the Bengals, 2-14 and 14 to nailing the draft two years in a row. The first, like, first pick, obviously, Joe Burrow but and Jamar Chase. But your first, second, and third round picks for the past couple of years, you pretty much nailed those. You had a couple of pieces and better rates in free agency. You get a magical run like the Bengals. So a lot of people say that this team is far off and – Look what the Chiefs and the Bills are doing. Look at all the offense. Well, they also have great quarterbacks commanding those offense. You get a great quarterback, all of a sudden, a lot of start, a lot of things start falling into place. So I definitely think that this team, if they get a great quarterback, 
or they can develop a great quarterback, a lot of other things will start falling into place. Absolutely. And so that's going to wrap us up for this episode, everybody. This episode is called Back in Black, baby. Just for you guys, because I love those new unis. But Hull and I are going to get out of here. We're going to head down to FedEx Field. We're going to go to the park and party. We're going to be able to go into the team store, see the new merch up and close. And uh, I actually might be purchasing something today. Uh, got a little, got a little something, something. Might be actually. I didn't think I was going to, but I think I was able to wiggle myself uh, some room here, and I'll be able to make a purchase. And I'm really excited to be able to go down there, see the new stadium, uh, not the new stadium, see the all the new merch, see everything down there. Go out, go out and see Keith. Go out and see Parker and all the other guys, and be able to hang out and enjoy this moment with them. I just wanted to let you guys know I was wearing the the Redskins salute the service sweatshirt for today's episode, uh, just because I wanted to give a nod of respect. Because apparently everyone thinks that I hate the old name, which doesn't make any sense to me at all because I wear this all the time. All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. And we will see you guys on Monday. Do not miss it. Everyone, be safe this weekend. Drive safe. Enjoy your time. Hit us up on the social media if you want to talk. We love. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say. Peace. Before I watch the football. Woo! <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get notified when anything new is uploaded to the channel. Also, we just launched theburgundyzone.com. You can go there and find all of our latest news, articles, and the latest episodes that are uploaded. Again, we also have the Discord chat server where all of our VIP folks are in, like Andy Burroughs, Scott Hartley, Sergio Martin is in there as well. Don't miss out on the Discord chat server. Go and check that out. Until next time, everybody, Washington football. Woo!